Uh, back in January, I lost a client, passed away. Uh, unfortunate set of circumstances. First time I've experienced it. Very strange feeling to experience the loss of someone that uh, isn't family or friends or a work colleague. Uh, someone that you work for to help to assist to improve the quality of their life which is you know quite complex in their presentation with with their um, mental health illness that they have and as a support worker you know we're at the, the very lower end of the care team we're not clinicians we're not uh, yeah, we're not doctors, we're not psychiatrists, psychologists or anything like that. We're there to support. We're not there to diagnose and treat. But in saying that, you develop a friendship which um, you'll never forget, basically. The conversations you've had with the person, their hopes and dreams, uh, the things that they've been through, the things that they've trusted you with in terms of information. Um, you know, I remember them even saying with some of the things that they presented with in their, you know, I never knew exact details, but one thing they said is that they're just going to take a lot of it to the grave. Um, and I never expected it to be so soon, so... Yeah, it's taken me about two months to be come back to the place where we used to go for supports. We used to sit down and have a lot of conversations. Um, we used to spend time in this park here. This is along the Maribyrnong River. It's quite lovely. And we'll be sitting at this, this park bench here. This is where we'll spend some of our time. And one thing that I remember with, with, this, with this person is um, we would he would overlook the, the actual river itself because um, he used to be in um, used to be in the army in the earlier days, which was uh, part of the PTSD that he ended up suffering from. And he would overlook behind me here. There is a tree. So right now my ear there. <laughs> it's hard to see, but there's a tree right there, and. He would constantly look out to that section of where the tr where the tree is, and he would say, um, "How do I get there? You know, how do I get to that tree?" And I'm like, "Well, you would walk to the main street, walk uh, across the bridge over here, <laughs> over the back, and walk along that section of, of road and get to that tree, or you would swim." So. They're pretty much a, the two options that he had. And he never did, obviously, but a part of me was always like, oh, is, is he going to do it? And I'm like, oh, I don't have a towel in my car. He hasn't got bathers. And, you know, I'm like, okay. <laughs> so he didn't want to deal with on that day. But it, it was just the way that he viewed life. He looked at that tree and he remembered a lot of the times when he was younger. And a lot of it was um, survivalist based. Uh, life lessons that he learned in the army like he would quite easily find a way to live and survive um you know at that tree there it is right near that yellow cautionary sign on the left across the bank that's where that tree is there you go zoom into a little bit so that's where he was more than content to really want to be um, in that tree at that time so I hope that yeah coming here was hard so it's hard but I'm glad that I've been able to come here I'm gonna spend a quiet moment now have a chat with him um, and all the best for the day don't take be humble be grateful for everything that you have in your life family friends your work colleagues, people that you come in, come into the world, that cross your path. He's someone that I'll never forget. 
um, it would be the first person that I've lost and certainly not the last but at the same time um, I'm grateful to have met him and I hope that he's able to fulfill everything that he wants in his dreams and perhaps he's sitting at that tree perhaps he's sitting at this bench I don't know but yeah thank you